the London equations, developed by brothers Fritz and Heinz London in 1935 relate current to electromagnetic fields in and around a superconductor. Arguably the simplest meaningful description of superconducting phenomena, they form the genesis of almost any modern introductory text on the subject. A major triumph of the equations is their ability to explain the Meissner effect, wherein a material exponentially expels all internal magnetic fields as it crosses the superconducting threshold. Formulations There are two London equations when expressed in terms of measurable fields J S T equals N S E 2 M E times J S equals minus n s e 2 m b display style frac partial math b f j underscore s partial t equals frac n underscore s e caret 2 m math b f e q quad math b f nabla times math b f j underscore s equals frac n underscore s e caret 2 m math b f b here js display style math bf j underscore s is the superconducting current density e and b are respectively the electric and magnetic fields within the superconductor e display style e is the charge of an electron and proton m display style m is electron mass and ns display style n underscore s is a phenomenological constant loosely associated with a number density of superconducting carriers throughout this article si units are employed on the other hand, if one is willing to abstract away slightly, both the expressions above can more neatly be written in terms of a single London equation in terms of the vector potential a j s equals minus n s e two meters a display style math b f j underscore s equals frac n underscore s e caret two m math b f a. The last equation suffers from only the disadvantage that it is not gauge invariant, but is true only in the Coulomb gauge, where the divergence of a is zero. This equation holds for magnetic fields that vary slowly in space. Topic: <inaudible> London penetration depth. If the second of London's equations is manipulated by applying Ampere's law, times b equals mu 0 j Display style nabla times math bf b equals mu underscore zero math bf j. Then the result is the differential equation two b equals one lambda two b lambda m mu zero n s e Two display style nabla carrot two math bf b equals frac one lambda carrot two math bf b q quad lambda equivalent sqrt frac m mu underscore zero n underscore s e carrot two. Thus, the London equations imply a characteristic length scale lambda display style lambda over which external magnetic fields are exponentially suppressed. This value is the London penetration depth. For an example, consider a superconductor within free space where the magnetic field outside the superconductor is a constant value pointed parallel to the superconducting boundary plane in the z direction. If x leads perpendicular to the boundary then the solution inside the superconductor may be shown to be b z x equals b 0 E minus x lambda display style b underscore z x equals b underscore zero e caret x lambda. From here, the physical meaning of the London penetration depth can perhaps most easily be discerned. Topic: 
Rationale for the London equations Topic: Original arguments While it is important to note that the above equations cannot be formally derived, the Londons did follow a certain intuitive logic in the formulation of their theory. Substances across a stunningly wide range of composition behave roughly according to Ohm's law, which states that current is proportional to electric field. However, such a linear relationship is impossible in a superconductor for, almost by definition, the electrons in a superconductor flow with no resistance whatsoever. To this end, the London brothers imagined electrons as if they were free electrons under the influence of a uniform external electric field. According to the Lorentz force law, F equals E E plus E V times B Display style Math BF F equals E Math BF E plus E Math BF V times Math BF B These electrons should encounter a uniform force, and thus they should in fact accelerate uniformly. This is precisely what the first London equation states. To obtain the second equation, take the curl of the first London equation and apply Faraday's law times E equals Minus B T display style nabla times math B F E equals frac partial math B F B partial T to obtain T times J S plus N S E two M B equals Zero. Display style frac partial partial t left nabla times math bf j underscore s plus frac n underscore s e carrot two m math bf b right equals zero. As it currently stands, this equation permits both constant and exponentially decaying solutions. The Londons recognized from the Meissner effect that constant non-zero solutions were non-physical, and thus postulated that not only was the time derivative of the above expression equal to zero, but also that the expression in the parentheses must be identically zero. This results in the second London equation. <laughs> Canonical momentum arguments It is also possible to justify the London equations by other means. Current density is defined according to the equation J S equals minus N S E V. Display style Math BF J underscore S equals N underscore S E Math BF V taking this expression from a classical description to a quantum mechanical one, we must replace values j and v by the expectation values of their operators. The velocity operator v equals 1 m p plus e a Display style Math BF V equals frac one M left Math BF P plus E Math BF A right is defined by dividing the gauge invariant, kinematic momentum operator by the particle mass M. Note we are using minus E display style E as the electron charge. We may then make this replacement in the equation above. However, an important assumption from the microscopic theory of superconductivity is that the superconducting state of a system is the ground state, and according to a theorem of Bloch's, in such a state the canonical momentum P is zero. This leaves J S equals minus N S E two M A Display style math bf j underscore s equals frac n underscore s e carrot two m math bf a, which is the London equation according to the second formulation above. 